this is Jeff Ryle from G4 Geomatic Resource in Houston. Today we're going to go over a, a simple solution for using Opus to compute the position of an RTK base that was collecting UHF radio. And uh, basically we're using a base and rover and all our data is collected on the rover. And uh, when they collected in the field, uh, they did at uh, any position, so it's plus minus 10 feet. And at the same time, they collected the static data. So we wait till the next day, we'll send the static data into uh, Opus, get a good position, and use Infinity Office software to update that base and, of course, the, the, all the RTK collected uh, information off the rover that's tied to that base will then be shifted. Okay. So once again, we have a base station using a fat tail. This will probably get three to four mile range, a GS-15 on a tripod with a height hook and uh, with a fat tail radio. And then the rover will be getting RTK corrections off of this. So this will be good for working outside the network in areas where there's no cell phone coverage. Then we'll collect uh, using the SD card uh, static data to bring control in at the same time. So it's essentially killing two birds with one stone. All right, the ARP, some clients will use a two meter pole. Um, that way you can type in two meters to open so the height. There's going to be no error on the height. If not, you have to measure the ARP. That's the antenna reference plane. And on the GS-15, it's the bottom of the silver uh, screw. Uh, if you're using a tripod, here's a diagram. The tripod set up the antenna. Here's the ARP, and here's the height hook. And in this case, whatever you measure, so you pull the tape down, it'll be metric in feet, drop down the metric. We're going to add 0.36 of a meter to that height measurement from the tape, get to the ARP. And that's the distance when we add those to the offset and the height reading. That's the, the value we'll send into Opus. Okay. So once again, we're going to have uh, a GS-15. You have to have an SD card inserted to collect static data. It's very important. Make sure that SD card is, has a lot of free space, so format it. And when the uh, static's turned on, the light will blink to show you recording static data. Okay. Um, what we'll do is just real quickly, we'll go through and take a look at the simulator. So on the simulator, what we can do is by this step as a base station, let's say switch to base and we'll go to settings, GS base, and then number two is GNSS raw data. This is where I check this box, say five or 10 seconds like an MDB, hit OK. And that would enable the static um, to store to the SD card. And I'll sort on the DBX on the SD card and then we download that data to send into Opus. Now under base setup, we're going to assume that all the settings are correct of a previous uh, video that goes through all the, the settings. Basically, we hit over any point. This will grab your position from the screen. And once again, that, that position over any point could be plus or minus 10 feet horizontal, 10 to 15 feet vertical. And that's why we're going to use Opus to, to narrow this down. So almost like bringing control into your, to your job site. Okay. So that, that just goes over real fast how to how to once again um, do the static, okay? Um, when the data is sent in, um, I'll show you how, how to get on uh, the, the website. Um, we put in our username or our email and uh, we sent our data in. So once again, we wanna wait till the next day to send it in. That way it gives the core stations chances to uh, update their, their static data to the internet. So you don't want to collect it one day and send it in the same day. Otherwise, your baseline may be uh, very long. So in this case, uh, we use a GS-15. There's the ARP height that we sent in. And we look at the number of fixed ambiguities. So this is very clean data. The RMS is very clean. And we're going to type in the NAD83 latitude and longitude to update our position. OK. Um, so once again, I'll just click. Uh, we'll go take a look how to get to that website. Okay, so we'll uh, type in Opus and just come here. And basically it's just showing us here, here's the website. And what I did is I choose the file. I can actually just grab the raw data. So we've got a previous video that showed how to export a Rhinex file, but um, did some stop and start, so I can pick the longest file and hit that. And then basically, um, we typed in the height uh, for the ARP. In this case, is 1.958. 
Okay. And in this case, we want to pick the proper antenna that we're using. So we're going to scroll down. In this case, we're using a Leica uh, GS15. Okay, so we'll scroll on down. Uh, take a look at it. See if we can find it. You can see there's a lot of uh, antennas here. It's important to get the right one. And there we go. Okay, then we type in their email address. And you have certain options that you can look at as well um, to customize. Oops. So let's say upload the static because we have over two hours worth of data, then it'll pick those automatically. So basically when you do that, it'll take around 15 minutes. And once again, after you send it in, we'll get results that we saw on this screen here. And I'll show you what base stations and how far those bases are as well, okay? So let's go to Infinity now. Um, we'll, we'll pull Infinity up. I'm gonna create a new project and I'm gonna call this project uh, RTK static UHF, okay? We'll create this project. And what we'll do now is we'll import our DVX data. So I'll come in here. Here's the file from the rover. So the rover will have all the RTK from the rover and also it's got the base station uh, positions transferred over from, from your uh, base that you set up for, for your GS15. Okay, so let's say import. And right now, here's all the data that was collected. What I can do is I can come here to layer manager. I can scroll down and under GNSS, I'll put this for now just so that we can see here's our base station. Here's all the RTK points collected. If your CCP is current, we can then click on here to see the background map. And this will show all the data that's collected. So once again, we set it up to hit any point, it's plus minus 10 feet. And now we're going to use the um, data from Opus to uh, fine tune this. Okay. All right. So what we can do is I'll go to the inspector tab. And under the GNSS, this shows all the rover data. We'll click on here for the base. So there's multiple bases, multiple setups. You got to update each one. So you can come down here. And over here, you'll see that we have our geodetic. And right now, it's only two decimal places. So we want to update this. This is a common mistake. So what I can do is just go to File, go to Info and Settings, Coordinates and Units, and make sure that we have this degrees, minutes, set, and set the most accurate as possible. Okay, so I come back in, that's now increased. And then basically I can come in and cut and paste the values. So here's 49.850, so we'll copy that. And then we'll take a quick look at what the uh, the other one was. It's 24.79987. So let's copy this from my report. Let's pull that back up. Hit paste. And um, what I'll do is right now I'm I'm in uh, feet. I can convert this to metric just because Opus is in metric. And once again, we'll come back in and there's the elevation there. So we'll copy that. One, two, two, four, five, eight. Okay. Then we'll hit the apply button. And what's going to happen if I hit apply, it's going to say, listen, your base station has been modified. So all the points that are associated with it, the 15 points that were collected, are going to move by this negative 0.2 meters X, 1.9 meters Y, and 1.13 meters vertical. We'll hit OK. And then once again, if we come back under view, all these points have shifted. Um, and have now been uh, adjusted to that control point. So once again, it's, it's not that much of a shift because the GPS is very accurate, but once again, we now tie this in 
to one to two centimeters. If I come into the inspector, come back to features, um, if you just take a look at the positions that we collect, this is a GS18 is tilt and non-tilt. If I scroll over here, um, we'll take a look at is the 3D CQ. So if I click, you can see that everything's very tight because we're so close using the base rover. I click again, and there's some control points. Here's some points that are averaged, and we got some temporary points that were deleted that were probably in the trees. So we can just delete these points, hit OK. And the worst point that we had uh, is four centimeters. If we want to change that back to feet, we can change that. And that's still pretty good. There's a lot of trees in this environment. So you can see the really neat thing about a base rover, the, the relative accuracy is very, very tight. You can see here on the data. So all, all this looks good. It pulls in, we've got Texas Central, uh, GOI 12. We then export our data as per normal, and then we should be good. So let's say export all the data and export to an ASCII file, okay? In this case, you can say point number northeastern grid, export that file. Then now we'll ship it over, come over here, open that file, and then we have our point numbers, northern eastern elevation code, and all that good information. Okay. Um, one other quick thing is just when we look at the point ID, there are some average points. So uh, this could be like for boundary corners. I can quickly look at the report, go to point quality. Scroll down, then at the bottom, we'll give a report showing all the average points and the differences between those shots. So it's good quality control, nice report that you can use. So that pretty well sums it up. And uh, we now have all our RTK data has been shifted over using the Opus. Once again, remember, always have an SD card, format it, keep it open, have a lot of space in the SD card. And send your Opus data in 24 hours after you collect it. Give the core stations a chance to upload it. Then you can quickly update your base position. Once again, check under GNSS. Under this tab here, there's multiple bases. Update each one um, to make sure that all the points associated with this base station is then updated to that position from Opus. So hope you found that helpful, and thanks for watching.